Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Uh, welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trade uh, weekend wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. As everybody go knows, uh, especially in the last week of the, we of the live webinar, I was sick as a dog. You can kind of hear by my uh, by my voice, it's still not 100% there. Still coughing a little bit, but uh, getting a lot better. Um, last night I was in the Yankee game, 50, 48 degree weather it didn't exactly help. Uh, but nevertheless, I am slowly but surely getting better and hopefully you guys uh, had a great weekend and I guess at least I'm going in the right direction. So that is a good thing. So hopefully you guys are having a blessed weekend. Hopefully you guys are uh, living the wonderful life that you deserve. And the most important part is that you're healthy and you can see another day. Everything else is kind of uh, a cherry on top. So let's talk about the kind of the big, um, the big news from last week. And again, I'm not even talking about the macro wise with China. Um, with all the you know ISM numbers that are poorly and the jobs number to save the market uh, towards the end of the week, uh, we're talking about the commissions, right? We're talking about the commissions and uh, the you know the uh, announcement that Ameritrade and uh, I think it was who who started it all. I think it was Think or Swim. I could be wrong, but Think or Swim, Ameritrade, E Trade, uh, all these uh, online retail brokers, uh, you know, throwing the towel, throwing the towel, and basically said that they are putting their commissions to the retail public to zero. They're again, they're not doing you a favor. Okay. And let me kind of, let me go back into kind of a quick history lesson and tell you exactly why. Okay. When I started out trading, I started out trading in a company called uh, generic trading, Carlin financial. Uh, for those of you guys who might ring a bell, what they are, uh, they were featured or we were featured, uh, in about 12, 11 to 12 pages in the Michael Lewis book, flash boys. Okay. Uh, if all you guys read that, you know, if you heard Carlin Equities Generic Trading, that was us. Okay. Um, so when I first started trading, um, I got a deal. Okay. I got a deal with 80% split, right? So 80 20 uh, split profit sharing. Okay. And three cents a share. Now, forget about the 80 20 part. Okay. That was already crazy to, to, to think, you know, especially in these days. But the three cents a share when I first got that deal, it didn't sound like a big deal to me because I said to myself, well, the, the way Ron Shear, if all you guys know who Ron Shear is, Google him, um, t sat me down and he said, well, three cents a share, 80-20 split. And basically he said, well, three cents in, so if you buy a thousand shares, it's $30. You sell a thousand shares, it's $30. Okay, great. It doesn't make, you know, what's the big deal? Three cents. If you're buying a stock, at $25, okay, so now you're going to $25.03, what's the big deal? You don't realize when you have, when you're paying three cents a share and you're just trading all day and trading all day and not knowing anything what you're doing and don't have a process and have no clue, okay, all you're doing is buying the stock and closing your eyes and say, please let it be higher, right? That adds up and that adds, adds up really, really quickly. Years later, okay, years later when, um, you know, when you got a little bit of sense under you, okay, a lot of traders got their deals done, kind of reworked their deals and got them down to a penny. And it was around, I think it was around 2001. It was, I got it down to about a penny and I said, wow, this is just, this is just great. Keep this in mind throughout the internet craze, nobody cared. Okay. Nobody cared about the three cents a share after you finally got your legs running and everything was going great. Because again, when you're, when you're long a stock overnight and the stock opens up up 10, 12, 15 points, who cares, okay? You care when you're trading intraday ranks and you're trying to scalp. Nobody was really scalping back then. So the idea that we went from three cents a share to a penny, it was like, oh my God, this is like the greatest thing ever. Think about that penny, right? It doesn't make a difference. You buy a thousand shares, $10. You sell a thousand shares, well, another $10. That's 20. Do it over and over and over and over again. You're looking at $100, $150 in commission again. You don't know what you're doing. You don't have a process and you're praying to God that your stock works out, right? It goes higher. Okay. It's a big deal. So years went by, okay. Years went by and traders got savvy. Okay. Let's not even talking about, let's not even talk about, you know, what happened for the next several years. Let's talk about what happened somewhere around 2005. 
Okay, so let's fast forward from 2001 to 2005. Somewhere around 2005, a lot of us, a lot of my friends who started out in generic and all that stuff, we turned to each other and we said, well, why the hell are we paying, you know, four tenths of a penny? And at that time, again, keep in mind, you're going from three cents a share from four tenths of a penny. So for every thousand shares, now it's four dollars. Why the hell are we paying four dollars, four dollars for every thousand if we already know, okay, we already know, and again, the longer you stay in the business, you kind of pick things up. We already know that the broker is basically, okay, getting clearance for free. Okay, now without going through the whole big thing, what clearance is and all that good stuff, you, again, all, a lot of you guys, you can Google and, and kind of see for your own, for yourself. But we're saying to ourselves, well, why the hell are we still paying four or five tenths of a penny, okay? We can get a clearance arrangement, okay? We can, you know, get a prime broker, whatever the case may be, depending on how big the trader's account is, and we could get our clearance basically to nil, okay? And what happened in the prop industry, somewhere around that time, a lot of the talent, okay, if you've been watching me for, for years now, I've been in a live webinar, we started talking about this years ago, a lot of the talent left, right? They left a lot of prop firms because they said to themselves, well, if I'm already trading, if I already have 100 up or 200 up, 300 up, whatever, 50 up, whatever the, the, the dollar amount is in their account, okay, it doesn't make a difference. If I have that number, why am I splitting profits with the broker, right? Why am I splitting profits with a broker? And why the hell am I still paying commissions, these type of commissions in the first place? So a lot of the talent left. So a lot of, if you guys notice, and you can Google this, a lot of the prop firms um, started letting go traders or a lot of traders started leaving a lot of their talent because, again, the talent level shrunk. Okay, there just wasn't good talent level because they had nobody to learn from because all the guys who started out paying three cents a share, they were long gone, right? They were long gone. So the prop industry started depleting, really depleting in talent, depleting their overnight exposure to traders. Um, and it was really dying out. And what happened was eventually, okay, the retail brokers, okay, uh, they started feeling pressure because if you guys started seeing all these commercials, well, trade with Schwab, uh, you know, why pay eleven ninety nine for a trade? You could pay eight ninety nine, and then Ameritrade would come out. Well, why pay uh, you know seven ninety nine? You could pay four ninety nine a trade. Why pay you know interactive brokers? Why pay four ninety nine? You could pay three dollars a trade. And slowly but surely, it started building and building and building and building. And ultimately, okay, ultimately fast forward to kind of where we are to last week or two weeks ago, whenever it started, I think it was Thinkorswim that came out and said, well, good news, retail public, okay, you don't need to pay $4.95 a share anymore. We are going to do you a favor, okay, because we love you, okay, we love you, okay, and we are going to make sure that commission doesn't stand in your way, right? doesn't stand in your way anymore for trading your goals, your dreams for becoming a professional trader, whatever the hell a professional trader means, right? We want to be with you. Come to us. And when, when Thinkorswim came out with that news and really, really started hitting all the, you know, all the online brokers, right? The Ameritrades, the E-Trades, the Schwabs, and they all just started collapsing, okay? Because again, the price war was real. The price war wasn't just started two weeks ago. The price war started years ago, okay? Just think or swim. I think it was think or swim that started. If, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I keep on thinking think or swim. I'm trying to kind of read the news here. Um, well, I'm sorry. It was interactive brokers. Interactive brokers. I knew, I knew it was nuts. I think it was, a, they called it soft commission, whatever the hell it was. So they started it and all these brokers got killed, right? Ameritrade and Schwab. Uh, all of them, right? Meritrade, Schwab, they all, they all got killed. What they didn't tell you, okay, what they didn't tell you, and I've been talking about this for years, okay, for absolute years, what they didn't tell you in that press release, and again, everybody knows the news, Ameritrade followed during the week, E-Trade followed, Schwab uh, followed, and they're all now commission free, right? Everybody, all ever retail brokers commission free. What they didn't tell you for years and years and years leading up to these events were, yeah, they're making money in their commissions, but again, it's not like it's a prop firm, right? And I, again, I was in the prop industry for years. It's not like you have a group that's doing 20, 30, 40 million shares a month, right? You're dealing with retail, right? You're dealing with retail. If you're a merchant, you're dealing with retail. Sure, you can have some active guys. Sure, you can have some active guys. No doubt, no doubt, blah, 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 blah. But majority of the public is, you know, buy 200 shares here. Maybe three weeks later, sell the 200 share. You know, th that's the reality, okay? What they didn't tell you, and they, you know, again, from doing you a favor, putting your commissions to, to zero, 
they've been selling your order flow for years. Okay, for years. They've had arrangements for years. And I, I don't remember, I don't remember who the broker was that announced this, but I think they said something to the fact that I think 4% of the revenue was commission. Okay, I think that was the case. And again, I could, you, please double check. And right away, that bell should have should have really rung in your head. They're not even making money on commissions anymore. They've been selling your order flow for years. If you've been trading with a non-direct access broker, okay, uh, you and I, I think if some of you guys probably have seen this, you put in your order and it kind of like holds up for like half a second or a second, like you don't get that instant execution. It, <laughs> so they've been selling your order flow. Okay, they've been making tons of money, tons of money, probably 0 0.003 or 0.004 uh, per share for years and years of order flow constantly. It's trillions of dollars trading every single day. Okay, just remember that. Uh, so they've been selling your order flow for years on top of the commissions. Okay, and majority of, especially newer traders that don't know that I only learned about maybe six, seven years in that the rebate game was ridiculously, ridiculously profitable. And with, especially for your new traders, what you guys don't know, well, maybe maybe you do, maybe you don't, but any single time, okay, you take an offer or hit a bid, okay, you're paying an ECN fee, okay? Well, if you're taking it through ARCA, which is the most expensive one, you're getting charged on top of your commission, okay? You're getting charged, uh, I think ARCA is the most expensive one, 0. 0.00045, I think, Bats is the most uh, is the cheapest one, but you know bats. Um, so there, anytime you hit it, take an offer, you're getting charged an ECN fee on top of your commission. Anytime you hit a bid, you are getting charged uh, an ECN fee. Okay, um, when you provide liquidity, okay. So basically, when you are not taking an offer, when you're just bidding for stock and you get hit, okay, you are supposed to get a rebate. Okay, so you are supposed to get a credit for providing liquidity. The problem is, uh, unless you've been around the block or anybody has never kind of sat down and told you this, the brokers have been keeping your rebates for years. Okay, for years. So yeah, it's cool and all when you have, you know, when you're trading a thousand shares, thousand shares there, four ninety nine a trade, but that extra money that's adding up through millions and millions of shares daily that even the retail public trades at the Ameritrades, at the E-Trades, at the Schwab's, they're making a fortune, okay? They're making a fortune. So when they announced, you know, when they announced, um, I think when, when Thinkorswim announced that they were going to zero commission, I started chuckling. Okay, tell the public why, right? Tell the public why. Why wasn't this in your PR? Don't worry about us. We're still... We're still going to sell you order flow. We're still going to keep the ECN rebates. We're good. We're good. We're doing you a favor. Come to us. And the problem is every single one of these brokers realize, well, one of the domino falls, we're all going to fall. We might as well all give out free commissions. Okay. We might as well all give out commissions and do you a favor that now we are going to extend your shelf life. Okay. We are going to do you a favor that now you have, you are in the driver's seat to save more money. To realize your dream, you're going to be a professional trader, right? That's the problem. Okay, that's the problem. It's the hidden. It's the hidden stuff they're not telling you is. And this is actually kind of a good thing. Okay, it's obviously a good thing. Uh, the retail trader obviously wins here. Okay, um, your goal right now is to do two things. Come Monday morning if you haven't done so already. You should call up if you have an account with Schwab. And e trade um, and think or swim, and probably any other retail broker. The first thing you should do is call them up and say, I want my commissions, number one, go to zero. Okay. In 30 seconds, they will say yes. Okay. Because if not, all you have to do is leave, right? Very simple. You don't need them anymore. You've never left them. I've been telling traders for years, if you're paying three, four dollars a trade, how are you not calling up your broker and say, take my commissions down to half, half take my commissions down to two dollars a trade, a dollar fifty a trade. They need you. You're you are the commodity. You don't need them. Okay. And now they know that. And now you have the advantage. You have the leverage. So any broker who is still charging you a commission come Monday morning, okay, 
you're either going to get free trades or you leave and you go to the ones already connect, already con uh, announced free trading, okay? You also, again, you don't even stop there, okay? You don't stop there because the next leg, what they're going to tell you, and they're not going to tell you this in public, but eventually they have to kick back your rebates, right? They have to kick, back, kick you back your rebates. It's just re reality. So not only should you call up your broker and say, hey, I want free commissions, okay? Now I want my rebates, okay? I want to get credits for my liquidity that I provide. And obviously, if you pay for liquidity, you have to pay. I'm okay with that. But if I'm providing liquidity on the way out, I want my rebates. Okay, that's the second thing. And again, if they say, well, we can't do that, of course they can do that. Of course you can do that. And obviously, the more active of a trader you are, again, if you trade 100 shares a month, yes, you're probably not going to get your, your ECNs back, probably. But if you are an active trader, and there's some pretty retail active traders that do trade a half a million, a million, two, three million shares a month, that you are paying a lot of ECN fees, okay, you should get back, you, you, you will be shocked how much money you get back on ECN rebates. So again, was this a good thing for the public? Absolutely. Were they kind of doing you a favor? Probably not. It's just called staying in business. Uh, who knows what's going to happen years from now? Okay. Uh, nobody knows. Okay. Absolutely nobody knows uh, what is going to happen years from now. But uh, will a lot of smaller brokerage firms go out of business? Probably. Okay, probably. Uh, if they do provide some sort of added benefit, because again, a lot of you guys are big short sellers, okay, and locates is, are a big deal for you. So if a broker is providing phenomenal locates for you guys, yes, you probably will pay a commission because they are facilitating a service that is making your business viable. Okay, so if you are getting phenomenal, you know, phenomenal uh, locates, for example, on the short side, Okay, you probably want to yeah, definitely get your commissions down, but that's the broker you want to hang on to because again, you don't want to go to eat, you know, you don't want to go to a, a different firm that has no locates, uh, pay zero commission, but you can't run your business. It just doesn't make sense. So the smaller firms that are giving you good locates, right? Um, lower overnight fees, if they can provide that business, you know, they're gonna be the ones that survive. Uh, but it's up to you now as a consumer to, again, you know, get control of your future, get control of your business. This is your business. This is one of the biggest expenses you are paying a month uh, as a trader is your commissions, uh, as, your, um, as your ability to run your account the proper way. So, yes, is this a big one for the consumer? Absolutely, it is. And now your job as especially a newer trader or even seasoned traders who just didn't know about this. Now you are in the driver's seat, get back control of your ECN fees for sure, okay, uh, and make sure that you are in control of your business. So hopefully uh, this will be a pretty good kind of a wake-up call if you guys haven't know this, uh, if you guys don't know this about already, again, please forgive my voice. I'm still uh, fighting a little bit of a cold, uh, but more important, guys, just again, gain control uh, of your future. So uh Really, really re re crazy, uh, crazy market. Uh, really, really crazy market. We, we again for all you guys who heard, uh, I, we started. I, th I think Kyler started putting out um, our nightly videos without um, without the pivot watches for obvious reasons. Uh, I think Tuesdays and Thursdays. So if you guys heard uh, Thursdays, uh, if you watched the watch the, the Thursday session, you first of all you saw how sick I was. But the most important part is how again how important technical analysis was, and we talked about how really important it was that the NASDAQ 100, the QQQs, reclaim this bottom channel. If you watch, go back to Thursday's video, you'll see that. Because um, every single time we held this bottom channel, what started was a, you know, a net move back up. And you can see it on Thursday's session spilling on, over Friday. Again, the job numbers were good. It actually saved the indexes throughout the week. Uh, even though we had this really big 370 point move on the Dow, the Dow actually still uh, finished in the red, so did the S&P for the week. The NASDAQ 100 squeaked out, I think, a half a half of a percent gain for the week. But again, what this did was kind of set us up. What Thursday's session did was kind of set us up for uh, future price action. Again, we are in the sweet spot traditionally uh, in the fourth quarter. Again, you have your um, you have your uh, Halloween, I guess, brief Halloween rally potential. Your Thanksgiving Turkey Day rally, your Santa Claus rally, your January effect, all that good stuff. Again, is that guaranteed? It's not. 
Uh, it's been viable now for years and years and years, but again, it's not guaranteed. So don't, uh, you know, set up for the long side uh, if you are not getting a clear technical symbol. Um, I think for the bulls to really stretch their legs, they need to confirm these two, uh, these two numbers. These are the, uh, the channels that I will share with you because it's very, very important. Uh, if you guys notice, it got, the cues got rejected twice. Okay, 190.58 on September the 25th and 190.58, the exact same number. Again, this is why technical analysis is so, is, is so essential for you guys to understand. Uh, if the cues can reclaim 190.58 on a close, then yeah, we have a shot for all you guys, especially trading on the option side. You might want to take a bet on the 195 because that is the measured potential. Again, if you believe stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, uh, then the next potential move is 195. So from 190 to 195, again, I'm not an options trader. I can't tell you how to uh, formulate your trade, but again, I'm pretty good uh, in directional bias and measured potential, and 195 is your pot of gold. Uh, so very, very aggressive week. Thursday, again, if you watch that video, and it's in our library on YouTube, just watch the video. It, it, Thursday was one of the more exaggerated pivot days I can remember in a long time. I'm talking about the short side, and then when the market reversed, and there was a tweet I put out and said, hey, Q's just, uh, Q's just reclaimed uh, daily support. We should rally, and big rally it was. Uh, but again, it's nothing to do with me. Uh, I'm, 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 I don't predict things. I'm not, a, you know, I'm not, I don't have a crystal ball. It's just technical analysis. And again, I, I said this in earlier in a tweet, uh, in, a, in a, you know, middle of the week. If I had to do it again and started my trading career all over again, the first thing I would do is get a book of basic Japanese candlesticks. That's it. Basic Japanese candlesticks, guys. I, I, I'm telling you, you don't need to trade with me. Okay. Not, pivots are not for everybody. If you have a $1,500 account, you can't trade with me. It's just, it's just, it's just the reality. So I understand the fact that there's 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 people in these alert rooms and they're all chasing the same $2 stock to make five cents. I get it. Okay. I get it. But you don't need that. That's the whole point. You don't need that. Any type of way you decide to trade, the most important part is sit your ass down, get a book of technical analysis, Japanese candlesticks are the most purest forms of just understanding. Okay. There's just very few things that, again, if you have all the spinning tops and all these all these things I have no idea what they're about, but things like, you know, things like, uh, uh, things like uh, hammers, inverted hammers, these are basic things that just will give you, if nothing at all, will give you at least directional probability bias, okay? And that's where you start there. You don't start out, again, building from the roof to the foundation. You start with the foundation to the roof, and it's incredibly important to understand that. So very, very, um, again, you don't need anybody, okay? Guys, again, if you're, all you 20-somethings that believe that somebody's giving you a trade it is ridiculous. You sound like a fucking fool. Excuse my French, but it's so frustrating to hear, uh, you know, a new trader talking about, I'll do anything to succeed. And they keep on going from these alert services to alert services, to alert services, chasing the same stocks. It just doesn't make sense. Again, eventually you have to stop. You're, you're, you're on a timeline. You guys don't even know it. You're, 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 and I said this before, you're, you're kind of like a weekly option, right? You're going to expire worthless. What you do in your time before you expire is crucial to your development. And it's incredibly important for you to really take control of your trading and start today. Forget about waiting for tomorrow. Again, what do you think is going to change tomorrow that it did from last Friday, last Thursday, last Wednesday? If you're doing the same thing, waiting for some guy, some random avatar to tell you, well, ABC GGV is about to break out. Well, that's 14,000 shares. Oh my God, there it goes. It doesn't make sense. Get your ducks in a row. Again, figure this game out or else you will be a uh, statistic. So, uh, again, Friday, again, Thursday was incredibly aggressive. Friday had more selective, okay, had more and more selective uh, areas of strength. Again, I am going into this week, I am, uh, I'm 80, 20 bullish. Uh, there's certain names that I do like to the downside if they confirm. Uh, Tesla is one of them. Uh, Tesla is definitely one of them. We gave a pretty decent trade on Friday. Uh, beyond, uh, you know, um, it's so close. It's so close. It feels like every single time beyond confirms really aggressively to the downside, some nonsense PR. And again, they had that PR with McDonald's and again, no offense to anybody who lives like in Southeast West Ontario, Canada, but they're, they're, they're putting them to eight stars. If this PR came out to Los Angeles, testing areas, Los Angeles, Chicago, LA, it's a whole different story. You know, so that Tesla beyond, I'm kind of watching to the downside. Uh, if they confirm everything else, I'm, I'm pretty bullish in. So let's let's talk about Friday session. So I, I took this pivot here, right? 
I took this Netflix pivot here, 269.50, 270. The problem with this pivot was I didn't get filled on any size. It only went up like 50, 70 cents. And if you guys remember, it was trading really, really thin. Okay, really, really thin. And yes, it went to 271 and a half. Uh, but it went, it was really, really thin. So I broke even on the trade again. Once you, once you see a hundred share lots, uh, I'm out. You know, it's, it's, it's re, there was no institutional pushing the stock. So I got out of the trade. Uh, I got out of the trade, uh, break even went up like a dollar and change again. I look again, safety's first. Um, and intra, intraday. Okay. You had that news that Disney is pulling, uh, all ads, right? You had that news that Disney was pulling ads. And the stock, I mean, really came in. I mean, really, really came in and, you know, came in like four or five points very, very aggressively. And when you guys noticed, right, when you guys noticed, uh, it woke up, right? And this is how you know the market is strong when they, they take bad news and they throw it underneath the rug and it woke up. It was very, very important. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, Roku never obviously got to that 110 area. NVIDIA uh, woke up late, okay, woke up late off that 182 level. Uh, made a move. Uh, I, I was already, I already logged off. I, I, I logged off early a couple of days this week because I, just, I was just sick. It made its move, uh, close above the 82 real area. I still like there. Um, Tesla. Okay. So I got long Tesla. Tesla was exactly the same trade as, um, I got long Tesla. What was it? Uh, all right. So here was the pivot, right? Here was the pivot that I initially put in 234 to the upside, 230 to the downside. I actually got long Tesla, and it was exactly the same thing as um, as Netflix. Okay, and it was trading very, very thin, and it went up, you know, fifty cents or so. Same thing, and I, again, I scratched on the trades. So my first two trades of the day were scratch trades, and I, and I and once I tweeted this out, and I go, I just don't like how thin these stocks are trading. I want to watch the bottom channels, and this is before the market exploded. So ne Tesla, com you know, Tesla confirmed two thirty. A nice trade. It went down to like 28, uh, 28 very, very quickly. Uh, good trade very, very quickly. And then you started seeing things started to wake up. Uh, shop 228 needs to build. Uh, again, not a big move, but I still like shop uh, 228. Only went to like 231. Uh, but again, I still like the channel. If it confirms on Friday, if it confirms this week, uh, 331, it should go. But you started seeing slowly things coming out of their channels. Uh, Amazon 1736 needs to build. Uh, you can see Amazon again, not big moves. Okay, not big moves yet. But here was this. Uh, 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 here was a seventeen thirty six. Uh, it's traded up to seventeen forty three. I like it. Once it starts building seventeen forty five, I think it goes to seventeen sixty, and then probably to eighteen hundred. Again, if we continue, uh, if you again, if, we, if you continue this area that we talked about on the queues, if it starts confirming I'm, Amazon, all these stocks will start confirming with it. So Monday, Tuesday will be uh, very, very important. So again. Not big moves, right? Not big moves. But the point is, again, they are mirroring, okay? They are absolutely mirroring uh, what is going on in the NASDAQ 100. And then things got really, you know, things got really, really good, right? Big area. Again, they flushed. Uh, again, I, and I even said this. I go, I go, I messed this up. I messed up the Netflix, sold it flat because how thin it was trading. And then I said it's 272 because it woke up. 272.30 will be the big area if it needs to confirm daily. So this is where Netflix just exploded. And congratulations, guys. This was like a $3 move, probably in about three minutes. Again, this was the 72.30, right? This was the 72.30 area. And it just absolutely went nuts. 72.30, it went to 75 and a half. I'm talking about in a matter of minutes. Just a huge, huge move on Netflix, right? A huge, huge, huge move on Netflix. Uh, Tesla, there you go. Again, this is where I tweet this out, 272.30, macro area needs to build. If it confirms that first push of 275, 73, it will get aggressive. And again, three points in a matter of like several minutes. Uh, bingo, bingo, bango, blah, 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 blah. And uh, that's about it. That's about it. This is be obviously a big area for Monday on beyond. So good, aggressive, uh, good, aggressive action on Friday. Again, you need to be a little more patient. Uh, Thursday was like getting five aces. Okay. If it was possible to get five aces, uh, it is, uh, you know, again, it's so important guys. And I think everybody in the live webinar has really, uh, embraced this trade the days that you're getting value. That's it. Don't trade the random days or the you know, ranges are 50 cents, 70 cents. Yeah. You can scalp it, blah, blah, blah. But you want the pot potential of really, really great, aggressive potential moves. And that's the key. So for all you guys have an awesome, awesome trading week. Call up your broker, get your commissions to zero, 
Make sure, again, you're extending your shelf life. Again, you don't need anybody, guys. It's all about technical analysis. God bless everybody. Have an awesome week and stay blessed. Take care. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.